You'll notice that the sermon title for today is Parental Concerns More Than a Map. And before we turn to the scripture, I want to share just a few thoughts to kind of put the scripture in the context of this day of Mother's Day. In addition to being Mother's Day, this is also considered the day that we celebrate the Christian home. So in essence, as we reflect upon mothers, we also group with our mothers, our parents, and other persons who have nurtured our Christian faith. I was reminded of a of a uh, card that a mother received from a little nine-year-old daughter that said, Mom, I love Mother's Day, but I wish that it came on Monday instead of Sunday so we wouldn't have to go to school. <laughs> you know, as we look at this day, sometimes we try to maneuver it in such a way that perhaps it means different things to different ones of us. But today, I want to suggest for all of us, for all of us that are parents, but even those of us, which includes all of us, that are concerned for the children and youth, of today and tomorrow. What would you give to these persons today? What do you want for your own children today as you gather here? Some of us, are, it's easier perhaps to say, well, I want my child to be financially secure. I want them to have a good education. I want them to be able to stand on their own and kind of the world. And as we talk about those things, then I say, but what do you want for your children or for the children and youth of our community? What do you want for them from a faith perspective? If you could today offer them guidance, if you could give them a book, we will, in this context, we say, well, well we give them the Bible. We, we say, here is a way that you can find a way, no matter how this world turns and changes, you can keep recurring back to this book, for it, it will indeed give you some direction. But we also realize at times that, that as the world changes around us and as the Bible at times seems to be detached, that we need something that will link us to this word that will allow us to let it speak for our day. If we could give our children a map, let's say, that can guide them and, and say to them, even as we give them this map through their life, you know, at times you will wander off your path, but if you'll just get back on this road, you'll be okay. If we could give them such a map, would we do that? What would that map look like? I know that Robin can attest to this as well as Casey. I am directionally challenged. I don't know if you know this, but God created MapQuest for me. And I should have a GPS somewhere on my body so that I not only would know where I'm going, but where I am. Early in life, Casey used to talk, tell people about, my mom loves those turnaround terms. And you know what those are? Those were her words for you terms, those turnaround terms. Because I have spent a lot of my driving experience and some of my life experience with U-turns. I was reminded this week in thinking about the text from 2 Timothy of Paul writing to Timothy and how Paul is writing from prison. Have you ever received a letter from a prisoner? I have on a couple of occasions. I had a church member in another church years ago who was in prison for a while. And what I learned from receiving letters from him while he was in prison that he didn't spend a lot of time talking about things that didn't matter. He didn't write and say, well, how's the weather? He didn't write to say things like, gee, I wish the food here was better. He didn't spend any time in his letters complaining about his current situation. But instead, what he did was he shared about how his perspective had changed. Because now that he was isolated from the world, isolated from the people that he loved, but how grateful he was for the church members who would send him letters and, and for his faithful wife who came every visitation day to visit him. But he also talked about how his heart went out for those prisoners who did not have any letters or any visitors. I share that with you to be reminded as we hear this text from Paul today that he's writing from prison and he's talking about the things that really, really matter. So today, as we think about what type of faith heritage we want to give to children and youth and persons and generations yet to come, may we hear the words of Paul writing to his dear friend and son in the faith, Timothy. 2 Timothy chapter 1, verses 1 through 14, and if you'd like to call us there on the back of the worship bulletin. Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus by the will of God, According to the promise of life that is in Christ Jesus to Timothy, my dear son, grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father and Christ Jesus our Lord. I thank God whom I serve as my forefathers did with a clear conscience, as night and day I constantly remember you in my 
my prayers. Recalling your tears, I long to see you so that I may be filled with joy. I have been reminded of your sincere faith, which first lived in your grandmother Lois and in your mother Eunice. And I am persuaded now lives in you also. For this reason, I remind you to fan into flame the gift of God which is in you through the laying on of my hands. For God did not give us a spirit of timidity, but a spirit of power, of love, and of self-discipline. So do not be ashamed to testify about our Lord or ashamed of me, his prisoner, but join with me in suffering for the gospel by the power of God, who has saved us and called us to a holy life, not because of anything we have done, but because of his own purpose and grace. This grace was given us in Christ Jesus before the beginning of time, but it has now been revealed through the appearing of our Savior, Christ Jesus, who has destroyed death and has brought life and immortality to light through the gospel. And of this gospel I was appointed as a herald, an apostle, and a teacher. That is why I am suffering as I am. Yet I am not ashamed because I know whom I have believed and am convinced that he is able to guard what I have entrusted to him for that day. What you heard from me, keep as a pattern of sound teaching with faith and love in Christ Jesus. Guard the good deposit that was entrusted to you. Guard it with the help of the Holy Spirit who lives in us. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God.